in joining me in reciting the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I want to welcome everyone to our meeting of May 19th. And uh, please note that the council's in full attendance. Of course, we have uh, a little bit out of order, some new items uh, on the front of the agenda. The first item will be the election results. So what I will do is uh, Mr. Matthews is here, George Matthews. I'll ask him to come up and so we can canvas the election results. Good evening, members, mayors, members of council. Uh, you have before you a spreadsheet uh, which shows the individual precinct by precinct reports. These are a compilation of all the uh, precincts in the election that was held on uh, Saturday, May 9th. Uh, if there are any questions, the uh, precinct by precinct uh, results are uh, been provided to the uh, city secretary for her records. Uh, and you have those. That's mm -hmm. that stack, yes. Okay. This, this uh, spreadsheet uh, exactly matches those precinct by precinct reports. Very good, very good. And I have signed the, uh, the canvas of general election to certify it. So, provide, and Mr. Gush has also signed it. So. If there are any questions? I just have one question. Yes, ma'am. What is the difference? Uh, sometimes there's like one or two uh, differences in the number from the votes cast and the actual votes. Uh, we get ballots by mail. In some cases, those ballots by mail come back and uh, a person sends a blank ballot back, in which case we have more ballots cast than we actually have ballots. Okay. Uh, occasionally, we cannot determine what the voter's intent might be. They may have tried to vote for both people, uh, in which case, if we can guess who they really wanted or if we figure their intent, we can... Uh, count that ballot for that uh, candidate. But if we cannot get their intent, we have to count it as an overvote. So sometimes there are overvotes, uh, which means that the person did vote, but we could not cast a, a vote for either one of the candidates. Okay. Very good. We also have, we mail out more ballots than actually come back. So when we're tracking ballots, as far as tracking how many people per, uh, were voting, uh, uh, before the election, we're telling you how many people we actually mailed the ballots to. Uh, in this case, we mailed out 1,171 uh, ballots, but we did not get uh, but about 950 of those back. So we're telling you there are more people had voted because we, we won't let them vote again on election day. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Any further questions? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. And then the next item is the... Uh, Certificates of election and the, the uh, statement of officers and then the course of the oath of officers before we do that I'd like to I have a plaque for mr. Hagan. I'd like to read it if, if that's okay sure, please. Uh, It says presented to David Hagan for your service to the citizens of Victoria council member May 2006 to May 2012 mayor pro tem May 2012 to May 2015 so I'll give that to you Thank you, Thank you. I know David's got a few comments he wants to make, but if you don't mind real quick, sure, I, I, I'd like to say something since Paul gave you the plaque. I shared this with uh, David mm. privately on the phone, but I felt like, you know, publicly I wanted to say something. You know, nine years of service is a lot of service uh, to the citizens of Victoria. You know, David is very dedicated with his civic duty. But, uh, and one thing about David, we all, I always knew where you stood. Didn't have to guess, and that's nice in, in today's arena. He was a man of his convictions. But the thing that I wanted the public to know, too, was that I, as the city manager, David was always very encouraging and always seemed to know when that phone call was needed and uh, gave me great support as the city manager, and I always appreciate that from elected officials. But uh, uh, he's also a man of great faith, and I know God has a plan for him, and he's going to fulfill that plan faithfully. So thank you uh, for your nine years here and these last almost uh, four years with me sitting next to you. Thank you very much. Well, I just want to say what an honor it's been to serve for nine years. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, 
uh, you know, been surrounded with uh, great colleagues, uh, wonderful uh, city manager and staff. Uh, uh, you know, it's I, I wish all the best to Jana. I pray that uh, she's been will be as blessed in this position as I've been, and uh, I will keep her in my thoughts and prayers. I know she'll do a wonderful job. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Hagan. We'll proceed with the swearing in. And as I understand it, our three existing council members can be sworn in at the same time, and Ms. Scott will be sworn in separately. So uh, I believe you three come on up front. And the photo ops, if anyone wants to take pictures, even afterwards, if you guys want to, whatever, you got family members, I encourage y'all to do that. Repeat after me. I'm going to say I, and I'd ask you to say your name. And then I. Josephine Solis. Jeff Balknight. Do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the duties of the Office of City Council Member, District 2, for the City of Victoria. And of the state of Texas, and of the state of Texas, and will to the best of my ability, and will to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution, the Constitution, and laws of the United States, and laws of the United States, and of this state, and of this state. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Just raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Jan Scott, I, Jan Scott do, solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the duties of the Office of, the office of City Council District 4, of city Council District 4 for, the city of Victoria for the City of Victoria and of the State of Texas and will to the best of my ability preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States and, laws of the United States and, of, this state. and of this state. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, we're going to. Our next order of business is to elect a mayor pro tem. The um, city attorney ran back to his office to get something he needed. <coughs> so at this point, we'll just take a quick recess till he gets back. Um, we'll give him a few minutes. I'm assuming we're going to need the ballot. I know, I, I suppose that we can accept uh, nominations. Do you, uh, Sarmel, do you think we can carry on or would you rather wait? No, we can carry on. Okay. So to elect a mayor pro tem, we'll uh, go ahead and accept nominations at this point and from any existing. I'd like to nominate Bo uh, Jeff Balknight. Okay. Any further nominations? I'd like to nominate Tom Halapaska. Okay. So Jeff Balknight, Tom Halapaska. Any more? Do I have to call for a number of times or anything like that? I don't think I do. No. Okay. Um, Let's do this. Uh, let's just vote by show of hands. Is that acceptable? Since I know we have another election later on in the meeting, uh, we may not need the materials that Thomas is bringing. If we should have a tie or something, we can address it when he gets back. So we'll give him a minute to return. Um, you can do a show of hands. And yeah. Between Scarlett and I, I think we're, we okay. can watch. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's do Mr. Balknight first. All those in favor of Jeff Balknight, raise your right hand. 
That's four. All those in favor of Mr. Halapaska, same. So four three. So that would mean Mr. Buck Knight is now mayor pro tem. Very good. And, and uh, since we're waiting a few minutes uh, to continue, you know, the mayor pro tem is a ceremonial position. I certainly don't mean to diminish it, though, by saying that it's very important. And uh, <laughs> well, I'm serious. <laughs> and in, in, in my absence, that individual will sit here and conduct the meeting and uh, often uh, sit in on a few other things. So it, it is a very important position. We appreciate it. And uh, I appreciate the good choices we have on council. There's a lot of experience. And Mr. Halapaska has lots of years. And Jeff certainly has experience. So um, two wonderful choices. So thank you, council. <clears throat> the, we can move on then. Uh, items from council B1. I do want to, before I forget, before I ask you guys if you have anything, I want to recognize former Councilman Buckard who walked in. Did she leave or is she still here? She left? Okay. Bad on me. I should have recognized her early on. I, uh, I Thank you, Mr. Alvarez, for reminding me, pointing her out. I, I sometimes don't always notice other public officials who come in and out of courtesy like to remind, to uh, have recognize another, them. Have another, have another former Councilman. Who? Yes. Lewis Knight, I'm sorry, Mr. Knight. You served on council how many years? On my yellow shirt, so I it. <laughs> See, I, you know, I, I'm bad about that. So, council, at any time, feel free to, to remind me or butt in. But um, good to see you here, as always, and you still continue to serve the city on other boards. So, thank you, Mr. Knight. Um, okay, items from council. Do y'all have anything in particular? Uh, I do want to pull uh, D2, by the way. And I have one item on the agenda. Let me uh, let Mr. Gush know we did vote for Mayor Pro Tem already. And Very that's uh, Mr. Bach Knight. So <laughs> we handled you. that part. I Excellent. know you have materials for a later vote, I believe, in the agenda. So, um, Okay, I have one item. Uh, is, is Colby, our Parks Director, is here. If he could come mm -hmm. forward. I wanted to ask this Friday, I believe, uh, just for information of the public and make sure everyone understands, this Friday there's a playoff game at Riverside Stadium. And the, the, also those facilities, the parking lot, et cetera, have been reserved for uh, the May, uh, what's it called, the uh, Memorial Day Bash, a really big event. Yes, sir. So it's going to be crowded, and we want people to be aware. What are the parking issues, and how should people attend, and where should they park? We worked with the uh, VISD, with the athletic department, um, and came up with a, a route uh, uh, to shuttle uh, people into the playoff game. Uh, uh, VISD chose to uh, use Memorial Stadium as the staging grounds there. Uh, so they will start that shuttle at 5 o'clock and run until uh, about 8 o'clock. The game starts at 7. They'll run about till 8. And then after the games, they will continue to run until everyone's had the ability to uh, leave the facility. And so they, they'll, they it'll run nonstop if people stay around or, or whatnot. And so uh, we'll be bringing them uh, in through McWright and to the uh, backside of Riverside Stadium and dropping them off and then turn back around and just continuously running uh, that event. Okay. And the decision to do the park and ride from Memorial Stadium was made by Victoria ISD? By the ISD. Athletic by the park. athletic yes. director? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, is the carnival in the parking lot of the stadium? Yes, sir. It sure is. And the people that attend that event will park where? Uh, they will they will park at uh, the uh, convention center. Okay. Uh, parking. So uh, just depending on what the weather is and that, we just wanted to make sure that we had a plan in place that made sure that the people coming to the um, the ball game were able to have a place to park. I didn't want them to come in and not be able to find a spot. We'd rather make sure that we had a spot that was available and and then bust them in. Okay. And when you say convention center, you're talking about the old Riverside Convention yes, Center right there yes, on uh, Red River. Yes, okay. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, of course, there's more rain scheduled or not scheduled. Forecast, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> it's maybe, gotten to the point maybe of scheduled. Scheduled. <laughs> right. There's more rain forecast, and I know there's areas in the park we could open up, but we just can't if it's wet. It'll just be a quiet yeah, we can't do that. We so. want to make the plan because we know that rain is, has a possibility coming. We want to make the plan out there because we have visitors coming from out of town, so they know where to go, and there's not a, a hectic chaos by 5 o'clock on Friday trying to figure out where we're going to place them. So we know this plan will work, and it, it will be in place, and so that's what we're running with and that's you know working with the ISD we felt was it was the best uh, plan for action for that for this game what was this the idea of parking at the county health department complex brought up it's uh, on Navarro uh, and uh, airline it's so much closer they yeah the the uh, um, 
athletic director was looking into that, and I'm not sure what he, he had found. I think he decided just to go ahead and, and do memorial because he knew okay. that he had the ability to, to do it, use it. Okay. Very good. And I know that the Memorial Day bash was booked much way out in advance, and so it's just a – First come, first serve situation, and then the baseball playoff game, they obviously don't know if that's even going to occur. So uh, maybe next year we can uh, – and I've talked to the city manager about it. You guys can talk about some policy or some shifts or changes in the way we do things to try to make it even better for both events because I think they're both great. Obviously, the Memorial Bash is large. That's a great event. So, Okay. Thank you, Kobe. Anything else, uh, items from council? No one? Okay. Uh, moving forward then. I'm checking my notes, excuse me. Uh, citizens communication, we'll go ahead and open that up. If anyone would like to come forward and, and state your name and address and uh, try to limit your comments at least to five minutes if possible, please. Very good, hello. My name is Nina DeLeo. I live at 407 West Staten in beautiful downtown Victoria. And as executive director of the Victoria Bach Festival, I wanna thank the council and all the citizens of Victoria for 40 years of support of the festival. Uh, as we go back and look at all the photographs and the memorabilia, I'm struck by all of the Victorians that have poured so much love and energy into this festival over the years. And it really heartens me to be able to look back uh, on all these decades here. We have musicians and audience members that come from all over the country, and I'm always heartened to hear their stories about how warm and welcoming Victoria is. And I appreciate the council's support and invite you all out this June 6th through the 13th for our 40th annual festival. I also understand that House Bill 3595 relating to the use of municipal hotel occupancy tax revenue passed the house last week and I personally feel that a sports facility is a very exciting prospect for our city however I do hope that the distribution of hotel occupancy tax funds uh, that the council continues to uh, value using these funds for support for projects throughout the community, in particular the arts community, and of course uh, the CVB. Uh, Tony Cordov's done a wonderful job of bringing us together with the hotel community and uh, facilitating communication, and we really appreciate his work. Uh, the, avail the availability of hot funds, which began about seven or eight years ago, uh, has been transformative for a lot of our, arts, our established arts organizations and culture groups and allowed new groups to develop and grow. Uh, I'm proud of the work that our colleagues in the arts and cultural organizations have done for Victoria. We know that it uh, enhances the lives of our citizens and brings people here to Victoria. And please know just how much the arts groups appreciate and rely on funding for, uh, from the hotel occupancy tax funds. And with that, I'll take my leave. I've got about 250 musicians coming to town. I need to make sure that they have their uh, airline tickets and their hotel rooms. And uh, I thank you again very much for your support of the festival. Thank you, thank you. I have leave to approach. Sure. Thank you. Citizens communication is still open. If anyone has any further comments about any topic at all. I'm Amanda Rocha, the executive director for the Texas Zoo, and I just wanted to take a little bit of our time to come talk about our current situation with the possible Guadalupe River flooding. I wanted to make you aware of what we're doing and what also um, Victoria City staff has been doing to help us as well. Um, as of right now, May 21st, 7 p.m., the river is expected to crest at 28.3 feet, and it will be moving about 31,000 CFFs which I just learned what it was. Anyway, um, whatever. Um, thanks to Rick. Anyway, um, so that's pretty scary for the Texas Zoo because 29 point something, something, something feet puts the water at our front gate. And um, so our plan of action right now is we are currently closing our storm drain. And as soon as I get back from leaving this, we will be evacuating all staff at this time. Managers will stick around, put the floodgates in. Um, tomorrow morning, it looks like we are going to have a little bit more time before our roads actually will get cut off from the flood. Um, managers, st some staff, essential staff will report tomorrow morning, get everything all buttoned up. Um, just so you know, our threshold for evacuation is 29 feet. At 29 feet and below, we're going to sit tight in the zoo, let our floodgates do the job. All animals, of course, are out of, you know, they're not on the ground, they're up high. Um, the staff has been working extremely hard. This is new for 
our whole staff. There's not one person on there that has been through any flood. And the most recent one was just five years ago. But we all were fortunate enough to miss it, so everyone's just working their, their tails off, um, even the animals. Um, fortunately, with Michael McGaw, our current curator, 99% of our animals are crate trained, including our lions. So that means in case of a massive, you know, we're expecting 34 feet, everyone can hop in a crate and we can go. Um, so that's really exciting and it's something to be very proud for. Um, so today, by the end of the day, floodgates are going up. We're going to report to work, finish up everything. Tomorrow, the, oh, FYI, the zoo will be closed for the next two days for safety reasons, roads and whatnot. We don't want to have to deal. We've canceled all of our field trips. Um, tomorrow night, the probably three staff members will be staying on property just to make sure the floodgates are holding. There's no drainage. Um, because the middle of the zoo is extremely low, right now we're like two feet away from the top of our our grades. So just to make sure the pumps are there to work, rock and roll. Everyone's safe and having fun. We're going to try really hard to push that water out of the way, open up again on Friday. Um, so the call will be made if it looks like it's going over 29 feet to evacuate, and that will be based on footage as well as speed, you know, that CFS. Um, we had tons and tons of support from um, Rick. I hear he's been on the phone talking over with um, Chief Drake, everyone else, Parks and Recs on board, evacuation sites scheduled for the community center. So um, we're trying to be as calm as we can. Everyone's doing great. And we are, we were, I should say, a little behind on our hurricane planning because we were shut down all last week because one of the original eight inch clay drainage pipes in the zoo, sewer pipes actually collapsed. Lynn, we fixed it. So your crew, his crew has come out, helped us multiple times, just try to blow it out as much as we can. It officially collapsed. $22,000 later, it is fixed. So we probably have about two-thirds more clay pipes left in the zoo, but we're going. The good thing is we could pay it. Bad thing is I'm going to have a aneurysm. Um, <laughs> um, so that's it. I just wanted to come give you all an update. We're, at this point, we're back to being positive. This morning it was... It was possible doom and gloom because we just were a little sure, but we have a great flood, hurricane, you know, storm plan, and it's in action, and it's working, and that's always really great to see. But okay. Um, do you have any questions for me or anything? This is very serious for our community. We have had tons and tons of calls. Um, anyone, we probably will not be answering phone calls at the zoo for the next two days because we do not have a voicemail, and there's not going to be too many people in the office to actually pick up the phone. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Good luck with everything. Thank you. Okay, citizens communication still open if anyone would like to come forward. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor and, and Council. I'm Ron Sitka. I live at 118 West Haven. I have uh, submitted an application for the uh, Sales Tax Development Corporation Board open seat that's available. And I uh, just wanted to come and introduce myself. Uh, I'm a 31 year resident of, tech, of uh, Victoria. I uh, graduated from Victoria College. I went to the University of Houston, Victoria for several mm -hmm. semesters. Uh, served on a number of boards here in Victoria, the, including the American Red Cross, Perpetual Help Home, Victoria County Wild Child Welfare Board. Uh, been involved with Rotary, Little League, um, a lot of different other functions and activities over the years. Um, and I just like your consideration for that position. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sitka. We appreciate anyone who volunteers their time. So that decision I, I will be made at the next meeting. We will discuss it tonight, or do we do make that? We'll discuss it tomorrow. Right, and then we make it June 2nd? That's right. Right, okay. Thank you, though. Uh, citizens communication still open. Anyone would like to comment? Now's the time. I'm uh, John Swanson. I live at 205 Cannon. I came down here to wish the uh, representatives that uh, were not reelected uh, well and to uh, recognize their service and appreciate their service and even the ones that uh, are going to stay and uh, to congratulate the new, uh, the new uh, winners also. But... Uh, the, the, this can be a challenging task, uh, and 
I wish you guys the best. If it was easy, of course, I would do it, but I'm not uh, volunteering for that, okay? <laughs> so it's not that easy, and I understand. And that's why I came to tell you that I appreciate what you're, what you're doing, except for the lawyer. But everybody else, <laughs> okay? <laughs> uh, but I do appreciate what all you do. Now, I have another thing to, uh, to mention that... Uh, uh, the uh, police chief, I'm going to give a uh, pat on the back to the police chief because he was handed a very tough, bad situation with Robinson beating up the, uh, the old guy. And uh, I can tell you that if you, there's certain classes of citizens that if you beat them up and knock them on the ground, you're not sure that they're going to be able to get back up. So be careful with older women older guys, and very young children. Take that into account when they uh, do the training. But here's where uh, the police chief deserves the credit. That's a bad situation. Uh, but he learned from it. And he's done a lot of uh, community effort, a lot of uh, uh, bringing up the uh, spirit of the team in doing positive things, not just dwelling on the punishing and pain that the police can deliver, but uh, focusing more on the uh, good community effort that can be done. So bottom line is uh, all of you are hand handed uh, tough problems sometimes, but uh, he deserves uh, some credit for uh, pulling, that, pulling that off, and I, I commend him for that. Uh, if you all have a bonus system, he deserves an extra bonus for, for that uh, effort. Okay, so it's, it's good it's noted. It's made uh, a better effort. It made a bad situation tolerable, much better. So that's it. Good luck. And Thank I, you, uh, of course, yield back the balance of my time. Thank you. Good afternoon, Councilman and Mayor Paul. Uh, my name is Benjamin Desi Lopez, and I reside at 2002 and a half. Southwest Bend, Jordan, which used to be the Cantu flower shop for many years. I've been blessed to live in Victoria now for seven months. <clears throat> All of your parades, your functions, your library facilities, and especially Queen City, I volunteer there six days a week. I've seen a lot of change in the six months that I've been here and got to witness Mayor Paul with the gold shovel blessing the Lutheran new consignment shop. Um, I waited until after the election to come up to the microphone because I've been retired tour guide for over 20 years. I have a lot of time on my hands. I, in San Antonio, worked with the graffiti abatement program to clean up graffiti. And when I introduced myself to Paul, I said, hey, graffiti could be a problem. He says, well, we don't really have a problem here. Well, I ride the public bus, and I see a lot of graffiti in the community. I've been trying to tend to the spot right here in the graffiti yard with that little kid bazaar and his little, and I, I've chased him around the community, and I use my own paints, and I use my own supplies because you guys don't have the resources yet that San Antonio had. I used to go over 20 gallons of recycled paint a week and I would go to different spots, east side, west side. I just want to be of service to the community of Victoria. I have a godson here and you know he goes to Northside Baptist. My mom just pulled off a great Cinco de Mayo celebration on Cinco de Mayo and the advocate was there and you know it was a beautiful event. But due to my community work, sometimes I don't present myself well or wear the same attire, but I am a USC alumnus, the University of Southern California. I have a degree in psychology, child sports psychology with an emphasis on Olympic history. We all have a chance to get gold medals if we apply ourselves, if our actions speak louder than words. And my words right now are thanking you for letting me be a part of your community. And if there's any district that needs any help, I'm of service to every one of you. And I just wanted to thank you for letting me be part of your community. Thank you, Desi. It's always a pleasure to visit with you. He comes by my office occasionally. Okay, citizens' communication still open. Is anyone else? Seeing none, we'll close citizens' communication. And we'll go ahead and move into our ordinances. Item C1 is an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2014-2015 City of Victoria General Fund Street Department budget by $250,000. 
and transferring $200,000 within the General Fund Street Department budget for the change in scope to the 2015 seal code project, repealing all conflicting ordinances, providing for savings, and declaring an effective date. Council? So moved. Second. Motion is second. There, there will be no public hearing for this one. Uh, any discussion? The scope was changed. Some of the streets that are listed in the CM or the C1 here uh, are not going to be seal coded. That's correct. Sorry. Sir? It, he, that's correct. He's asking about there's some streets that won't be done that were originally planned to be done, and that's, that's correct. correct. That's correct. Would you look? Would you know off the top, top of your head which ones? It's it's uh, it's the the different communities of Colony Creek. The, the the Colony Creek ones. Some of it's like West Haven of Colony Creek. I think some of those uh, that we're having to defer now because we just don't have enough funding. Can you give us a map the first time we saw this? I thought you did. Yes, there was a, at least when the original, there was yeah, a, a, a map in the original uh, seal coat project when it was done. Then, then we came back and, of course, rejected those that award, and uh, I haven't supplied another map with that. How's the rain been for your roads? It's been rough, rough. The rain is... Yeah. Really, really making the, the roads come, a lot of them, you know, unravel. Uh, Mr. Alvarez, the largest subdivision is Meadow Creek that still will be done. Yeah. Um, and, and Hamlet and uh, Eagle Creek and I think Springwood, or part of Springwood anyway. So you said that some of the Colony Creek subdivisions will not be done? Will not be done in this project this year. We will. We will still do them, but it would be in a subsequent year. Is that for all of them, or are some of them still included? The ones, that was all of the ones that were in the, this original project. All the Colony Creek ones are the, the newer of the projects, and so we're, we're deferring, those. deferring those. So that on this list, that's the lakes of Colony Creek, the estates of Colony Creek, the village of Colony Creek, um, and West Haven of Colony Creek? Exactly, yes, ma'am. Worst first, you're doing the worst ones first. What we're trying to do, yes. Yeah. Can Can you explain why the total funding on on the this 2.440 and then the resolutions 1.883 or 833? Where, where, what are I missing here? Did it, it narrow? It narrowed or? <clears throat> try to catch up with you Mr. Oh, the total funding is still 2.4 uh, the 188 is what the bid was and then we were doing yes. those transfers to cover the difference yeah the 1.833 was the the original contract with the change order that was approved on uh, uh, March 17th so that that contract along with the change orders being uh, canceled and then we're adding back the original funding Plus the transfer and the amendment to make up the the total of the 2.44 million that'll be applied to the to the new project with the change in scope. Makes sense. No, I just wish it would say that in the resolution, in the ordinance, the 2.44. It's not declaring that anywhere, unless I'm misreading it. No, no, you're not misreading it. The ordinance itself merely details mm -hmm. the amounts that are moved for only in individual right. line items. It doesn't detail the total cost the total. of the project. It's technically, the only two movements are the transfer and then okay. a, a budget amendment. The, the other is existing funding. So the difference between the CM1 and then the ordinance? Mm -hmm. I don't want to confuse the issue. That's okay. Yeah. Well, the ordinance is purely for the budget transfer, the budget yeah, amendment. It, yeah, it's not. Um, yeah. But the same one details Further all the info. dollar amounts. Okay. 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 Yes, good, sir. Mr. All right. Any further questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Thank you. Item C2 is an ordinance amending Chapter 24 of the Victoria City Code of Ordinances relating to fees to remove to move the fees collected for commercial animal establishment permits from the city secretary administered fees to the city county health department administered fees, repealing all conflicting ordinances, providing for publication, codification, and savings, and declaring an effective date. 
Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, we'll go ahead and have the public hearing. Uh, no, that's okay, it doesn't matter. It's, it's on the floor. Anyone who would like to speak to uh, C2 specifically, now would be the time to come forward. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing on C2. Council, is there any questions? Uh, will this become part of the fees that uh, we vote for that goes for the city and later on? Uh, no, ma'am. The, these are fees that the, will be adopted by the county. You're talking. But yeah. they're the same fees. I'm sorry. They are okay. the same fees. They're, you won't see a change. when We, we won't have to readopt them again, I guess is my point, uh, Ms. Solis. So when we bring any new fees forward later this year for mm -hmm. uh, budget, unless Ms. Campbell comes up with some increased fees, you won't see these fees again. Okay. They're uh, just being transferred from the city to the county, and the county will administer them now? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the county will issue the permit. Currently, the city secretary issues the permit, and collects the fees and it'll move to the county yes sir. They, they used to be with the county and then years Dr. ago kate the former director didn't want to do it they came over here and now we're, we're sending them give back, it back. Wow. Okay. It, we, we just believe it's a much more efficient method because the county's the one that's going to do the inspection of the facilities and do the enforcement uh, and so it, it makes it i don't know if you can say one stop shopping but kind of yeah with it, it seemed like it we would be better paired over there than yes ma'am okay <clears throat> And Ms. Solis, this will then be similar to the other animal control department and, and health department fees that are administered by the county. The city will set those fees if there are changes that are requested by the county. But it, they'll be set by the county and merely adopted by the city. Okay. But this part of the fees are going to be incorporated into the other fees so that when correct. we see them again, it's going to be in a bigger package. It's going to be with all of them. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's what I was asking. Thank you. Did we ever address selling animals on the st street or the sidewalk where they were selling dogs and is this it's prohibited okay. that was years ago yeah that was yeah so that stopped it's still out there people still do it <laughs> not near as bad they're not yeah. supposed to <laughs> well they didn't get a permit right <laughs> <laughs> out in the lowe's area that was where that was happening yeah Okay, any further discussions on C2? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, C3. Item C3 is an ordinance amending the 2014-2015 City of Victoria Health Plan Fund budget to provide the initial funding of $1 million for an other post-employment benefits trust, repealing all conflicting ordinances, providing for savings, and declaring an effective date. So moved. Second. Okay, a motion and a second, and we do have a public hearing on this. If anyone would like to come forward and speak to C3 specifically, now's the time. Okay, seeing no one, we'll close that public hearing. Council, are there any questions? Can we just quickly, what's this, the purpose of this? I know we had a long discussion. You want the short version or long version? Short, very <laughs> short version. The main objective of this, of this uh, uh, ordinance is to establish to move money into a post-employment, post-OPEB trust fund, where we're going to start creating a, we're going to start separate, establishing that fund, and annually we contribute $200 for the next nine years to build up that fund. After the 10th year, that fund will start helping pay the city's post-employment benefits, health care premiums, and offset that high cost from the city and start taking over those payments. So in the long run, it's going to minimize the cost to the city. Because you're compounding your interest, you're using your interest to offset the, high, the, the premium costs in the future. Does that make sense? The, the, we yes. have to recognize the liability that right. those post-employment it's the, it's, it's benefits. The, the premises are, the reason for this is there's a, we're putting some of this liability on the books. Well, we require them to put on the books. Which is, what's the OMB or what was it, CR? Gas, what, it's GASB. Gas gas right yeah, it's a GASB requirement. Right. But, but uh, right now, uh, if we don't do anything, the whole thing comes on the books, and uh, uh, if, which is fine. But we'll be looked at kind of negative towards rating agency, and we go. We do have an aggressive CIP. We go every year to the market, so that's a negative effect there. But I, even with that, I think it still is a proactive uh, situation for the city to start doing something like that because these are items that the city of prior council and current council agreed to take care of some of the retirees in the future. So it behooves us to start planning to get a financial tool in place to handle that future liability either way. It's like you know, like a pension, technically. You know, we, we put money on the side every time, 
this is the same logic. You want to put money aside to take care of those costs in the future. So in the long run, it's going to save the city. Uh, I can't take them now, but it's 50% it's of the total cost of the old payable liability. Old payable liability at that now is about $9.5 million. So. And the other thing, this is strict. It, this is. This fund cannot be used for any other purpose. That's correct. This, this proceeds will go to an actual trust where the city or the creditors don't have any access to it. And on an annual basis, well, on a quarterly basis, Andrew and his team will be meeting with the investors to structure the, market, structure the investment policy where how the funds will be invested. And, give them, and keep one thing in mind, it's important that we are restricted how we invest our money from public funds because we have certain laws required. So I... Right now, I'm lucky you get a half percent increase. When you go to the market, you know, in the past years, you can average at least seven and a half easy. So that is the biggest gain right there, and that's why you want to do something like that to take advantage of that higher yield production there. Just as a reminder, too, especially for the public, the million dollars is coming out of the health fund uh, reserve, so it's not general fund money that yeah. we're funding the, the trust with. It's all the health fund. Back in 2008, when we started doing this, the OPEP liability, we, we barely had a $2 million reserve. Over the years, we built up that reserve. And back then, we couldn't do anything, really, because we had that recession in place. We needed those funds here. Now we have an opportunity to take advantage of this positive environment we're at right now and take care of it so we're not back at the table later down the road. What is that health, the, roughly the total balance in our health fund? The health fund right now is 5.5, uh, 5.7. 5. 5. Very good. Uh, close to a year. But this one we're bringing down a tad, yeah. but I'm very confident we'll work it up. I, I, I applaud staff. This is a very responsible thing to do, and I, I know it's <clears> tedious, and the day-to-day -day citizen doesn't, you know, pay much attention to this, but I applaud you all for this. Yeah. You keep an eye on things and bring it to us. It's great. Human resource finance work together, make sure those numbers tie workly and the numbers look good. So, and we'll be coming back in in the future to talk about those numbers again. What's the anticipated source of the two hundred thousand for nine years? Is, is this I'm sorry, Miss. The anticipated okay. source for the two hundred. The two hundred thousand dollars, and you're going to see in this coming year's budget, will be from each individual fund, based on each individual staffing. In other words, general fund might have four hundred people. Well, we're going to allocate. That two hundred thousand, based on that ratio by fund, does that like make sense? Departmental expense. It become a, an annual current budget expenditure over the next year, nine years. Okay. Thank you. Good question. Okay. Any more discussion? If not all those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Consent agenda. You want to do the first, the three, and then we'll do D two after. Sure. There are three items remaining on the consent agenda. They are first the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of May fifth, twenty fifteen. Third, the resolution authorizing the city manager to execute all documents necessary for the use of temporary labor for various city, city departments in an estimated annual amount of $250,000 in declaring an effective date. And D4 is a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a contract to update the city's existing surface water treatment plant's programmable logic controller system with Schneider Electric USA Incorporated in an amount not to exceed $88,620 in declaring an effective date. Mayor, I move uh, that we adopt D1, 3, and 4. Second. Okay, thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Now D2. Item D2 is a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a contract with Harrison, Waldrop, and Uherrick LLP to perform the city's annual audit for the year ending September 30th, 2015 in an amount not to exceed $48,000 and declaring an effective date. Yep. Second. Second, I, I just wanted to pull it because I wanted to recognize a good, clean audit again. And I know Steve Van Manis is here. If you'd like to make comments. Uh. I think Steve was going to make a few comments, Mayor, if you, okay. if you'll allow me. The, the item in front of you will actually approve their engagement letter for our upcoming fiscal year. Uh, but Steve is here, uh, and we just wanted – we had laid the completed off audit for the year ending September 30th, 2014, in front of you uh, at one of the April meetings. So you may not, may not have had a chance to really look through that. Steve was just going to give a couple quick highlights on it, but yes, it is another clean opinion. So, uh, Steve and Manning, which is one of the partners with Harrison Walter and Herrick. Mayor, members of council, it's great to be back. Uh, I think we said just a few short comments. The overall financial condition of the city 
did improve slightly from the previous fiscal year. Uh, general fund had a increase in fund balance of about two and a half percent and the water wastewater fund also had an increase <coughs> in its financial position. Now, not only do we do an audit of the financial statements, we also have to uh, test the internal controls and compliance with federal regulations because the city receives an amount of money from uh, federal funds which requires these additional procedures. And Andrew mentioned that the financial statement audit was a clean opinion, but also the opinions on internal controls and compliance that are also included in the document are also considered to be clean opinions. Now, if you have an opportunity to use this report, I would encourage you to go to start on page four. Uh, that's a section of the report that you can spend an hour reading that section of the report and you'll get a really good quick overview of what happened last fiscal year. It's a section of the report that's titled Management's Discussion and Analysis. Uh, the rating agencies use that section of the report because you know, they want to see in a short period of time what happened at the city. They don't have time to go through 220 plus pages of this document. So they'll focus on the MDNA. And so I would certainly suggest that if you have some time, look at that section of the report. Uh, you know, for instance, the rating agencies want to know, did the financial condition of the city improve or decline in the last fiscal year, or from the previous fiscal year? That answer is very clear in the MDNA, where you have a statement titled Statement of Activities. Uh, it does show that the overall net position of the city increased from the previous fiscal year. You know, the city has done a lot of work with this document. You know, the actual required disclosure stops on page 81 in this report. There's 225 pages in this document. Uh, the city voluntarily uh, elects to provide this additional disclosure. It's a lot of additional work, uh, but it does uh, provide the city the opportunity to submit this document to the Government Finance Officers Association for an annual review and grading, and uh, it'll be submitted again this year. It has been submitted, and I think, I think the city has received the award uh, for the uh, excellence in financial reporting for the last 32 years, I believe. Uh, so it's certainly uh, an extra effort by staff to create this document, but I think the additional information certainly is worthwhile. Uh, Last year, when I came before council, I also had a letter that I presented some uh, suggestions regarding some of the operations of the municipal court. Uh, we talked about those, and I'm certainly pleased to report that there's been a lot of progress made uh, in some of those recommendations that were uh, suggested last year, and we're continuing to work with staff uh, to follow that through to completion. And I'll certainly be willing to attempt to answer any questions that y'all may have right now or certainly feel free to call me back at a future meeting or just call me on the phone if you have any questions concerning the financial statements. Very good. Councilor, are there questions? Okay. He was easy to work with again this year? Uh, no yes. problems? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we hire you to watch him and check him out. All right. Now, he hasn't got a page yet. <laughs> you know, the, the staff does a great job for the folks. I mean, it's, it certainly makes our job a lot easier because of the, the work that they put in uh, to their, their, their job in this audit report. How many staff do you bring over for this type of audit? And myself, another partner, and then two other staff members. How long does it take you? About two and a half weeks of field work, and then we spend a lot of time in the office. Right. Okay. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. You bet. Look forward to another clean one next year. So. Me too. Do we have a motion? Yes, we do. Yes. Any further comments? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that passes. Thank you. Item E1 is a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute all documents necessary to convey 3501 Meadow Lane Street to Roy and Brenda Robinson in exchange for $8,000 and declaring an effective date. <clears throat> second. Motion and a second. Is there discussion on E1? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you. Item E2 is a resolution authorizing the city manager to submit an application to the Texas Department of Transportation Transportation Alternatives Program Grant that includes city financial participation to construct a multi-use path along Larry Lane, declaring that the city will support this grant and be committed to completing the project if it is funded and declaring an effective date. 
Make a motion we adopt E2. Motion and a second for E2. Discussion? I have a question. Any idea what the timing is on this? The award, I think, will be July. Oh, oh, this year? We'll know if we've received the award July. Right, Mary? August. August, okay. It's off a month. August. Okay. <laughs> but that project wouldn't start until probably end of the year or next year or more like that. I'm not sure about the deadline. Mary, you, do you want to come up? Do you have any ideas on how quickly the project has to be? I mean, we won't budget for it until October 1. It'll be budgeted. Yeah, I don't know all the exact um, requirements that will be behind it, but, you know, we will obviously have to, the text that would be entering into a contract, and there will be a couple of um, <laughs> Uh, kind of the contractual requirements that have to get moved through with tax that because we are using federal funds. It would be federal funds. Um, and then there's also the project would still need to get the official design completed prior to moving forward. So I'm not sure what the timeline for that would be. Um, I'm not sure if actually Lynn may be able to talk more on the design process and how long that would take before it moved to construction. If you, I'm sorry, Mary. I, I'm assuming you said the magic word federal funds, which means you have to submit plans and that wait for approval yeah so, that's yeah, exactly right we have design they have to go to TxDOT. they have to get approved by TxDOT. it's there's going to be a little bit of back and forth prior to really starting to jump into the project i'm really crossing my fingers because that's a very needed area there by the school absolutely on down. and so I'm, I'm so happy that y'all did this i really hope we get it so mr alvarez i'm sorry Just, I, uh, and, and I kind of if we can't start doing some of the preliminary until we get the funding yes sir but maybe we get a head start, but what's the point? If we don't get the funding, then we've just wasted resources. That's correct, yeah. Okay. Thank you. In the interim, I, I have already talked to Ms. Garrett about if that could be mowed uh, mm. at, on a more regular basis, or I'm not sure that it hasn't been. I haven't watched it a lot, but I've seen it. It's very tall, and that really is the sidewalk, and at the non-sidewalk. And Yeah. It, and Ms. Scott did bring that up, and I did drive it. I think part of that's going to be more of a code enforcement issue with private property, some of it. It's not all of our responsibility, so I'll, we'll, I'll ask code enforcement to get out there, too. So. There's, not, yeah. there's not a lot of room, so I guess your, your right-of-way is limited. You'll have to fit we're, this in. So We're mowing what we're supposed to be mowing and contract. So. Yeah. Very good. I know I've had a lot of input on this particular project, so I'm hoping. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, any further questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, great. Item E3 is a resolution appointing seven members to the Hotel Occupancy Tax Fund Committee and declaring an effective date. But, Mayor, before we can take a motion on that particular uh, resolution, we need to fill in the blanks for the people who will be appointed to that committee. If you'll turn to the CM1, you'll notice there are six names mentioned who previously have served on that committee and whom I am recommending again to serve on that committee. We've contacted each of those six um, are interested in serving uh, again. Uh, Sharon Barnes, who represented history interests, is unable to serve for another year, unfortunately. We have, however, received an application from James Weirden, um, who says he's interested in serving either representing the hotel and convention industry or the history. Uh, as you know, he has done several uh, historic restorations downtown, um, and he's interested in filling that spot. And so it's my recommendation that we fill in the, um, the spots on the resolution with those names that are listed in the CM1. And just for public consumption, I'll read those out loud. That would be Vic Caldwell representing sports, George Matthews representing arts, Charles Grant representing the hotel industry, Christy Henry representing the hotel industry, Mike Rivera representing sports, Denise Rangel representing arts, and then newly adding James Weirden to represent history. I'd like to make a motion we adopt the six that want to serve another term and add uh, Mr. Weirden, seventh I'll member. Second that. Okay, so we can add all seven. There's. Uh, that's not too big a committee. No, I think I think we can manage that size committee. And you're gonna that way you can get started letting them know when the meetings are and trying to corral the group. And Absolutely, we do a lot of work in a very short period of time, and so coordinating seven people's schedules can be hectic to say the least. Okay, okay, I'll bet. Any further questions or discussions? If not all those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Very good. 
Item E4 is a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute all documents necessary to accept a click it or ticket traffic safety grant through the Texas Department of Transportation in the amount of $3,995.69 and declaring an effective date. So moved. Second. A motion second. Any questions? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. E5. Item E5 is a resolution ratifying the city manager's execution of an emergency construction contract with Mercer Construction Company for the Guy Road, excuse me, Guy Grant Road emergency sanitary sewer line replacement in the 5100 block of Guy Grant Road to replace a section of 24-inch sanitary sewer line and install a manhole for their low quote of $62,000 and declaring an effective date. Make a motion to approve item E5. Motion in a second. Is there questions? Um, I have one for Mr. Short. Yes. It said that you did uh, scope it. How's the rest of it look? I mean, are we looking at a project that needs to... We are looking at a future project. Uh, it's a concrete line that's uh, it, going to need to be lined. There'll need to be probably one more point repair made on it and then have it uh, trenchless lined in okay. situ formed or whatever. That'll be a future project, definitely. I would add that the even though the contract amount was sixty two thousand and that was the original uh, quote, the actual work is complete now, and the the final pay amount will be forty eight thousand eight hundred and sixty five dollars so it came in less than what we originally estimated it at. How did that happen With less pipe. That's a lot less, less pipe it's less pipe and which which translates into less concrete pavement repair. Sure. Less cement stabilized sand backfill. Uh, also, uh, one of the ser the only service on it, we were, it was in good shape, and we were able to reconnect it in the trench rather than having to relay and cut more concrete and that sort of thing. Where's 5100? It's, it's pretty much right across from Chandler School there. But it's, this wasn't in the concrete section. It is. It was. Yeah. So you had to cut the concrete. Yeah. I, I've been over there. I didn't notice it. So they put new concrete down. Yeah. And, okay. Okay. It's all weekend work. They did over several consecutive weekends. Okay. Maybe I did see it. I don't know. So, so how old is Guy Grant? Just I think it was built in, we looked this up today, either 2000 or 2001. 2000? 2000. 2000. And that utility line is failing at this point. Well, yes, and I'm not sure uh, when, when exactly the line was put in. It may have been prior to that because uh, that's a concrete line and Concrete hasn't been used in, in many years, so I, I suspect so it's much that, older than the, I suspect than the, the street the line is much older than the street. Okay. Would you do that again now, under over a line of that age? Uh, Put concrete general, over. It? Yeah, general well, question. Not, not knowing, not in the condition it is now. In the condition it was in 2000, Maybe. Uh, it was it was. I know for a fact it was uh, camera inspected, mm -hmm. and at that time the decision was made that. Uh, it was in good enough shape to, to and, and you don't know that you didn't you just said you didn't know the age of it that particular line even back then but now everything you put in is cataloged recorded you know how old stuff is Absolutely. you know estimated lives yeah. yeah okay and everything of course now is different much better material than yeah yeah it was available a long time. okay any further questions if not all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. those opposed okay. Item E6 is a resolution ratifying the Director of Public Works execution of a reconciliatory change order number one to the Ben Jordan Street emergency sanitary sewer line replacement in the amount of $28,345.50, bringing the final contract amount to $198,855.50 and declaring an effective date. Second. Second. Motion second. Are there discussions? I know where this one's at. Saw it the other day. So <laughs> a long patch. Right? Okay. Seeing no questions, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Item E7 is oh, a resolution is approving change order number two to the 2013-14 rehabilitation overlay project <coughs> with Brannon Paving Company Limited, which increases the contract by $547.50, bringing the total contract amount to $1,936,002.50, authorizing the Director of Public Works to execute the change order and declaring an effective date. Will we adopt the E7? Second. 
We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Is there any way to determine the quality of the base before we seal coat some of these roads? You could, you could possibly take a sample of it and, and possibly tell what's going on. Uh, you know, this is one of those uh, subdivisions that we were, were hoping to save and we seal coated it and then of course we've had just, just lots of rainfall that has uh, come in underneath the curb and and saturated that base right. and as as heavy trucks move over it's, it's pumped and there's failures and we need to we need to go in there and do much like we're proposing to do with the the new seal coat project and replace some of that base at least in those damaged areas and then reseal coat it's just it's, well, thanks for taking care of these, though. Appreciate that. That rain has reminded us how frustrated we had a, the one benefit of the drought. It's been pretty neat, but boy, as I drive around, I try to make mental notes of places I see and I try to tell y'all, but I can't keep up. So, all right, any further questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ford. City Manager's report. Uh, Steve uh, alluded to one award that we've gotten for several years, and this is another one I want to present tonight to Gilbert and uh, the finance staff, but it's the Government Finance Officers Association Distinguished Budget Presentation. Uh, what this indicates is that we have the commitment of ha the highest standards of putting the budget together and presenting that budget for governmental budgeting <coughs> purposes. It's also the only national award that the Government Finance Office gives for governmental budgets. So it's, Gilbert, you'll have to help me. Is it 26, 27 years? Do you know? You don't know. Okay. <laughs> I think it's 27, but anyway, uh, it, it is. It, it's just to, uh, you and your staff should be recognized for that. It's a lot of extra work, and but we do it, pride ourselves in doing a good job, and it helps the public know what kind of budgeting effort we do. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have to say, I, <clears throat> I think I told Charmel this afternoon, didn't we just do this a month ago? Because I know you get, <laughs> you get a handful of awards from other entities, and we're very proud of that. So. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a question. Yeah, turn off the mic. Where do y'all store them? Anyway. Um, he needs a case, by the way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, where do you put them all? We, you hang them up, some of them. They hand out these little uh, medals, and, they, you, and we got this big plaque. Now they got oh, smart. Okay. Yeah. Now you, and now you get to put them on the plaque. So, so they're like, he's Victoria again. So well, they, somebody they told him. Okay. Yeah. Right. Paved a lot of trees, huh? <laughs> um, Okay, so the next two items uh, are Ms. Wobotis. Mm -hmm. um, Mayor and Council, the, uh, there's two boards that um, uh, former Councilman Hagen served on, and uh, as a result of the election, uh, we need to replace, uh, he has someone in his position. On the Victoria Development Commission, the three members that are on that board are uh, Emmett Alvarez, uh, Jeff Bach Knight, and of course David Hagen. Um, those terms do come, are expire in June, and so we will need to go ahead and replace three, you know, appoint three members to that board. Um, and then the Victoria Housing Finance Corporation, um, the three members are Emmett Alvarez, uh, Mayor Paul Plasek, and then it was David Hagen. And so we'll need to fill that one vacancy because that term expires in December of uh, 2016. Okay. So you'll bring back resolutions on June 2nd and yeah. we'll fill in the blanks. Yes, sir. I just, just a reminder, neither of these meet at all, I believe. Do we have to meet once a year for any legal reasons, it seems like? But we don't, yeah. They're inactive, but they're necessary to keep that door open for possible use in the future. I think it's best right. for it. Okay. Right. Did, did you say that you, on the first one, that you have to replace three members? That, well, not you don't have to replace them, but three have to be appointed because their terms are up in June of this year. Okay, it says June of 2017. That's the new term. The new term will expire. Oh, oh. All right. In 17. If you ever wanted to volunteer, now's the time because they don't right. meet. Because these, these are all council members. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
sound good to me. Yeah. We're, and on June 2nd, we'll fill in the blanks and vote on those. So. Okay. And then uh, the other board is the Victoria <clears throat> Sales Tax Corporation. Um, Jan Scott serves on that board. And since she has been elected to council, she's no longer eligible to serve as the citizen on that board. So there will need to be someone appointed to fill that vacancy. I do have a packet of applications um, that you all can um, look at. Uh, Mr. Sitkas is in there as, along with the rest of the, the folks who had applied in December when we uh, appointed at that time. Okay. Very good. Very good. I know we'll have some good choices there. Well, and we may receive some more prior to the June 2nd meeting, too, which we do. We'll, Scarlett will make sure she gets those out to everybody. The, the only other thing, excuse me, but the only other thing is if you would like for me to contact those same folks and ask if they are still interested, I can do that before the next meeting. Do you have their emails on here? Uh, their email, all their contact information should be on their application. So if you want to contact them or if I, you know, want me to, just I just need to know. Excuse me, just a minute. Ms. Garrett, did you say we should or shouldn't? What was your well, suggestion uh, on that? Well, Ms. Swoboda, December, everybody had been contacted and had uh, expressed an interest in still serving. That's whose applications you have. Uh, Lee Keeling and Nelda Chambers have reached out and made their interest known on their own. Yeah, I, so another. I mean, so uh, it, Ms. Swoboda can contact the rest of them that we haven't heard from. So we've heard from three. Yeah, if there is any question to verify, yes. Otherwise, the ones you feel like that we just mentioned, no. Sure. They, they're aware of what they, so use your discretion, I guess. Is okay. the uh, that what's the term, what's left in that term? Uh, we know, Jan? Um, what this is you. Uh, uh, it says it runs through December of 2016. 2016? Right. Yeah, she was, she was just she, reappointed. I know, it was recently. Yes. And they're two-year terms. Okay. Right. Uh, but real quick, before we, we're going to call for an executive session that will pretty much conclude our business. Before we all get up to go to the executive session, we need a group picture right here. Okay? So don't run off. All right. The City Council will recess now for executive session on the 19th day of May 2015 at 6.07 p.m. The subject matter of the executive session deliberation is as follows. Texas Government Code Section 551.072 to deliberate the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property interest due to the fact that deliberation in an open meeting would have a detrimental effect on the position of the city in negotiations with a third party. Texas Government Code Section 551.071 consultation with an attorney on a matter involving pending or contemplated litigation or other matter in which the duty of the attorney to the governmental body of the, under the Texas Disciplinary Rules and Professional Conduct of the State Bar clearly conflicts with the Texas Open Meetings Act. Thank you. Okay, so we'll adjourn to executive session.